I have already filmed this video once. Do you know how hard it is to make Dark Academia books sound any different from each other? <laughs> and now I have to do it again. Can you see the pain in my eyes? <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today this video kind of acts as a video of two purposes because not only is this a Dark Academia TBR for me, but I'm hoping as well that this video will contain Dark Academia books that you probably haven't heard of before. There's gotta be at least one. <laughs> Before we get into the list to clarify what I mean by dark academia it is generally an aesthetic of I guess the closest genre would be thriller books that do seem to have a very specific set of tropes themes aesthetics something that is very recognizable as dark academia I have done a video on this before so I will leave a link to that down below if you do want to check it out because in that one I kind of go into more examples of this and breaking it down a little bit more but for this reason a lot of the synopses of these books are going to sound incredibly similar because I can guarantee that most if not all of these books are going to follow a group of people within an academic setting of some kind who are involved in something like a murder. It usually has toxic friendships in there, it's usually quite intense and we usually know that there is a murder from the beginning so quite a lot of these books tend to start with the initial murder and then we jump back in time to see how we end up leading to those events. I will however list off the differentiations between these books and tell you a little bit more about them but the first one I'm going to start off with actually hasn't come out yet but I do think that a lot of people would be anticipating this one because this is The Things We Do To Our Friends by Heather Darwin. This one I am so excited about and the publisher did very kindly send me an arc after I requested one because this is a dark academia that's set in Edinburgh. That, that's, that's all I needed to know. So the general tagline for this is what is the cost of an extraordinary life if others have to pay? And it says that our main character Claire arrives at Edinburgh University with a secret but this is her chance of kind of leading a life with a blank slate nobody needs to know about this until she meets Tabitha who is kind of like the ringleader of this very enigmatic circle of friends that they are very rich very extravagant kind of intimidating and of course Claire wants in but then apparently Tabitha reveals a little project they're working on a project they need Claire's help with and Claire can't say no because they know what she did straight in there with a blackmail <laughs> I cannot wait to read this one and I hope it's going to end up being everything that I'm dreaming that a dark academia book set in Edinburgh will be I did also receive a letter from the author with this book in which she explains that she studied in Edinburgh herself and she found it really fun to write toxic friendships and things like that so I think that this could be a really big hit and I'm so excited for it this one comes out in January do add it to your radar your wish list get it pre-ordered it's gonna be great <laughs> Next up we have Long Black Veil by Jennifer Finney Boylan. This is one that I came across in a research for a video that never actually ended up happening but I still might do it at some point. But this is one that follows six college students in 1980 who are up to no good and end up exploring the ruins of an abandoned penitentiary. Penitentiary? Penitentiary. I'm adding too many R's to that word. <laughs> But it's not too long before they realise they are not alone in these abandoned ruins and the night ends in tragedy. We then skip forward to years later but looking back on the event as somebody is finally charged for murder and the people who were involved are pulled back in with more secrets of their own coming out during this whole process. This to me sounds very much like if we were villains so if that is the case it's going to be a hit. It's quite a short one as well so I would be quite intrigued to see how well it manages to build the intensity because that's one of my favourite things about dark academia as a kind of subcategory but I also also just love this cover I think it looks really cool definitely gives off the dark academia vibes another one to add to the list next up we have they never learn by Lynn Fargo I have seen this one doing the rounds recently so you might have actually heard of this one but this one is following an English professor at a university who every single year decides to pick one man to murder and she's very good at murdering and getting away with it until she's not. Apparently somebody finally notices that men just keep seeming to turn up dead at this university and an investigation begins but deciding to keep her enemies close she ends up insinuating herself as part of this investigation to see if she can continue getting away with murder. I know that Cody read this one recently and really enjoyed it so I'm really wanting to get to this one soon. One which is really popular is All's Well by Mona Award. This one is followed a woman who has a chronic illness and again is a professor within a university but she ends up trying to kind of wrangle her students into performing All's Well that ends well and they do not want to perform that they want to do Macbeth but she's absolutely adamant that they will do all's well that ends well because this is kind of like her redemption moment but somewhere down the line she ends up meeting three strangers three mysterious benefactors who seem to know more about her than they should do and after meeting these three strangers she ends up noticing that her students are kind of getting their comeuppance for being so annoying rowdy 
difficult to work with. This is one that I actually started but I ended up putting back down because I have a chronic illness myself and the chronic illness talk in this book was just a little bit much at the time but I do want to get back to it because to me I could already tell that this would be incredible representation in that part but also as well. I've read Bunny by Mona Award and that just ended up being one of the most memorable books that I've read so I reckon this one could follow suit. And another one which is fairly popular that I did actually start but I DNF'd with the intention of returning to at some point is Summer Sons by Lee Mandelo. In this one, we are following a guy whose best friend, partner in crime, partner in everything, dies of an apparent suicide. They've been apart for six months. It's the first time they've ever actually spent time apart. And just days before they're reunited, this event happens. And our main character is left with a very strange inheritance. Not only this huge house that his friend owned, possessed, and the housemate who lives within it, but also a spirit. He quite literally inherits a haunting and it's a very strange situation. He has to come to terms with all of these secrets coming out about his friend who he thought he knew everything about as well as the situation that he's just been thrown into. I can already tell that this is a book that I will love. However, it very much tackles the toxic masculinity topic, which basically means they talk about cars a lot. And at the time I just wasn't interested in hearing it quite frankly. So I did put it down just because I wasn't really prepared for that going into it, but I was really enjoying it up until the point that I was reading. It very much reminds me of Ronan from the Raven Boys. If any of you have read that and you know, if you know, you know, Ronan would fit into the story seamlessly. So if you know him as a character, that is the vibe, which is also how I know at some point I will end up loving this because Ronan is my favorite character in the Raven Boys. So yeah. <laughs> Next up we have The Lake of Dead Languages by Carol Goodman. This one follows a woman called Jane who never thought that she would return to Heart Lake after experiencing a double tragedy during her student years. However, she actually ends up becoming a professor and returning to the very same university to teach Latin. But the very same events that have haunted her for years and years actually end up occurring again in a weirdly similar fashion. And it seems that she alone can see these events playing out and so it's down to her alone to try and stop them from happening again. This is a very like old school kind of paperback I feel. Even down to like the quotes on the back and how they're written it's very... I don't know how to explain it but... When was this published? Because... Huh? <laughs> what the hell? I think the wrong book is bound in this. Surely not. Okay, this very clearly says... <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> this very clearly says The Lake of Dead Languages by Carol Goodman, but then you open it and it's apparently Seawolf by Patrick Robinson. <laughs> oh my god. This actually is about Navy Seals. <laughs> Hang on. But the so confused. The top of this though says the like the languages, Carl Goodman. What what? I initially thought this was like a, a preview to a, a book within a book, but the copyright page is genuinely for Patrick Robinson as opposed to Carl Goodman. These pages aren't meant to be here. <laughs> And then it just cuts off on page six and actually goes into the correct book. I've completely lost my train of thought and where I was going with this book, but this book exists. Hopefully not with the US Navy SEAL story in the beginning, but <laughs> yep. <laughs> Next up we have The Bellwether Revivals by Benjamin Wood. In this one we follow a bookish guy called Oscar who leaves his previous life behind to become a care assistant in Cambridge and he quite enjoys his quiet life amongst all of the spires and the beautiful buildings but then he meets and falls in love with Iris Bellwether who has a completely different life to him. She is very rich and very intelligent and she has an older brother who has some very strange kind of projects going on, shall we say. And apparently Oscar gets pulled into these experiments that just escalate into a darker and more twisted goings on than he ever anticipated. I think that this sounds incredible. This is probably one of the ones from this list that I am anticipating the most, so I really need to get to it. Next up we have Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. This is one that I've known of for a very long time but I haven't seen too many people read it but it does sound really good because in this one we are following a school student who finds her teacher dead that's assumed to be suicide because he's found hanging. Now her friends actually accuse her of having something to do with it since she was the only person to see him. Her parents tell her to just completely leave everything alone to try and stay out of it as much as she can but she cannot let this mystery go. She needs to know what happened because her life just seems to be followed by all of these strange and mysterious goings on and she needs to figure out if they are all connected somehow. Now something interesting about this book is that it is actually kind of told through 
book references. So every single chapter is a reference to a famous book and we have illustrations inside as well. I don't think too many of them. Oh, actually there are more than I thought. But for instance, this chapter is called Wuthering Heights. So yes, I think that this sounds really cool because it is told through almost a school curriculum. That adds another unique element to this one and I'm sure all of us book nerds will love it. <laughs> Next up we have Black Chalk by Christopher J. Yates. This is one that I've had for a little while now. It does initially follow six best friends who attend Oxford University who are all taking part in this game where with every single round the stakes get higher and higher until it eventually becomes a tragedy of sorts. And then in typical Dark Academia fashion we jump ahead to the future and we actually see this group of friends return one more time to have one more round. And I imagine the secrets of the past are revisited and we figure out what actually happened. This one again is a pretty short one and I am quite intrigued by this whole game scenario especially since there do seem to be multiple rounds of it so I hope that we do actually get to witness the escalation of that because I think that that could be quite entertaining to read. Next up we do have a recent release and a young adult book with The Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Stephen. In this one we flash back to 10 years ago where four students died within this college forcing it to close its doors and the case eventually went cold. We then jump forward to the current day and age where the college is reopening and we follow two girls who are absolutely adamant on discovering what actually happened. This one is said to read like a gothic murder mystery which is exactly the vibe that I would love so I've seen good praise for this one I really want to get to it soon. We then have The Trance by Kate Weinberg which is one that comes up quite a lot whenever you search for kind of lesser known dark academia books because this one again we're following a tight-knit group of rule breakers within a university who are involved with something that goes tragically wrong, has a professor involved somewhere, and things begin to darken as they share secrets, lovers, and finally in tragedy. So very much fits within the clean cut dark academia formula. So whatever it does within that, I'm sure will be highly addictive to read about. And we have a very similar situation with The Lessons by Naomi Oldman. This is one which I never would think was a dark academia based on this cover, even though the title and the spires of the buildings on the cover would insinuate that. I don't know. But this is another one set in Oxford where we have rich students, we have somebody who is an outsider entering this kind of society that was previously beyond them, trying to fit in and getting pulled in under a dark influence. So not too much more to say about that. It is quite vague from the back. But another one that has a night of tragedy that we need to discover all about. I do also have a couple of classics which I had never even heard of in relation to this but definitely sound like they fit the bill because first up we have good old Shirley Jackson with Hangs a Man. In this one we're following a girl called Natalie who is the daughter of a mediocre writer and a neurotic housewife who is increasingly unsure of her place in the world. In the midst of adolescence she senses a creeping darkness in her life which will spread amongst nightmarish parties, poisonous college cliques and the manipulations of the intellectual men who surround her. I think that sounds great. Somebody just getting pulled into this whole society that is probably Probably far too pretentious, highly toxic and something to be warned against but clearly not being warned against and getting sucked into it. With Shirley Jackson being known for her gothic stories I feel like this could be a very interesting one walking a very fine balance between things being unsettling and kind of that questioning feeling. So could be a good one to check out. We then have Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. This one again seems pretty straightforward. We follow a group of girls who go for a picnic and don't come back. That is all it says on the back. That's it. That's it. How dark this gets, how twisty this gets, how intense this gets, I have no idea. But I can hopefully tell you soon. <laughs> and then I have a handful of books which I don't think fit the dark academia bill perfectly but they do definitely seem to have the vibe. So first up we have The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. The synopsis of this one kind of reminds me of Fight Club because it very much has the whole like club rules. The Mary Shelley Club is a secret you know with the whole like nobody talks about Fight Club situation. And new members to the Mary Shelley Club have to pass a fear test. You must pick your target before the test starts. That's your eight ball. You must scare everyone else in the room, but if you don't sink your eight ball, you failed the test. The game isn't over until everyone's had their turn. A member of the club can never be a target and a fear test ends when your target screams. Now I believe that our main character in this goes from being just the weird unpopular girl to public enemy number one overnight for some reason or another, but that ends up attracting the attention of the Mary Shelley Club and so she's invited to join. She ends up joining, she gets pulled in she realizes that it's more than she signed up for. Do we have murder? Rachel has to track down the killer. There we go. They start being picked off one by one. There's your murder. <laughs> now this one I'm really not sure whether it would fit the dark academia vibe but you cannot tell me that this isn't dark academia in a nutshell. Tell me that's not dark academia. This is an instance of the finger post by Ian Pierce and we're set in Oxford 
1660. We're following a murder trial and all of the people who are standing and testifying within this murder trial are people with vastly different opinions of what happened. And amongst these testimonies we have a Venetian Catholic who is claiming credit for the invention of a blood transfusion, the son of a supposed traitor to the royalist cause, a chief cryptographer, a mathematician and theologian, and a famous Oxford antiquary. So tell me that is not the dark academia aesthetic. Come on. <laughs> We then also have For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This is more the sort of one that's sold as a thriller that just happens to be set in a school. Teddy Crutcher has won Teacher of the Year at the prestigious Belmont Academy, home to the best and brightest. He says his wife couldn't be more proud, though no one has seen her in a while. Teddy really can't be bothered with a few mysterious deaths on campus that are looking more and more like murder or the student digging a little too deep into Teddy's personal life. His main focus is pushing these kids to their full academic potential. All he wants is for his colleagues and the endlessly meddlesome parents to stay out of his way. If not, well, they get what they deserve. It's really not too bad that sometimes excellence can come at such a high cost. Is he the murderer? Is he the murderer? Is that what this is meant to be? Is this you but in a school? As in the book and the TV show you, not you. <laughs> I'm not asking if you're a murderer, okay? I would like to trust that there are no murderers watching me right now. God, that's an unnerving thought. Anyway, finally, <laughs> I've talked about these books far too many times. Finally, we have Sarah's Amusers by Antonia Angres. Now, I don't know how closely this one fits, but it does say that we're following artists. Four artists are drawn into a web of rival. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Four artists are drawn into a web of rivalry and desire at an elite art school. Apparently it's 2011. America is in a deep recession and Occupy Wall Street and follow a whole bunch of people as they experience an explosive hoax. And all of these students who were involved in this in some way are trying to move on but they keep getting pulled back into this whole situation. I believe this is only half set within the college situation so I don't know how closely this would fit the bill but I did just want to mention it in case it is one that you want to check out. So this uh, rather large stack of Dark Academia books is teetering precariously on my table after being pilfered from the shelves behind me that I now need to put back, rebuild the aesthetic before hopefully actually reading them at some point because that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> if there are any in particular that you want to hear my thoughts on, do let me know because I need some way of prioritising these. As we've already established, I'm terrible at decisions, so help me would be much appreciated. <laughs> and hopefully you've managed to add some more books to your own wish list, TBR, your radar, whatever it is that you added your books to. And if you have made it this far into the video, then leave a little candle or scroll emoji. Why not? But in the meantime, I'm gonna love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so I know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're on a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!